Um, the third kind of large issue is when does it end? Now I know, well like the folks that I was speaking to when I was over at Lowe's today, right? Your hope, in many ways, is that it will never end, you know? This is, in many ways, a magic place. My wife and I, as I mentioned, came over, um, and we were walking around here last night at about 7 o'clock, and, you know, we're watching the kids playing, and the, you know, bikes, and we're saying, what a great place. So, we, and, and we were talking about, well, wouldn't this be great for our daughter's kids, you know? And she's not even married yet, you know? So we're already imagining these grandchildren, you know, wouldn't this be terrific? So you're, you're always imagining this as the place that is going to always, that someone's always going to want to be there, right? Some of your family is always going to want to be there. And that may be the case, you know, when I talk to the Lowe's, and we, we're talking about, you know, places from their grandparents, you know, it's been a hundred years, you know, it's been a long time, maybe a long time, or it may not. But the point is, you want to figure out the way in which it ends, and ideally ends in a nice way. Because the reason why you love this cottage as a place for your family members to come is because it's going to be a place, you hope, that's going to create amicable, nice feelings and positive and all this stuff, right? You don't want it to be a place as a result of which everybody is fighting. That's not the point. So, how does it end? Uh, one possibility, which is really common, is the death or incapacity of the last child. And when I say incapacity, the incapacity of that last child to come anymore, right? So you give your, your children um, the, you just say, after they have all died, this all ends, right? The second possibility is when there's just lack of use. I've, I've seen and done uh, agreements or deals where it's simply specified at the point at which the, the, the cottage is used less than a given number of weeks or a given number of days in a year, that's the point at which it gets sold. Right? So that it doesn't kind of drift into, and, and I'm, I'm sure there are some houses here that are like that. They're like, why is no one ever home there? What, you know, kind of what happened? And it's somewhere in the family and it's just kind of drifting along and people are still sending checks or something, but it's just drifting, right? So you may decide that that's the point at which it stops. Or there may be some kind of vote, right? And in any event, there should be some way through some kind of vote right, even if it's a unanimous vote, right, that you decide that the cottage is going to get sold. So you want to, once again, it is to the extent that you're setting something up that you really want to have live on, you have kind of a responsibility to figure out, to say to people right up front, here's the end game. Finally, um, what happens? What happens if they've decided that it's going to stop, right? Or if it automatically triggers that it's going to stop. Now, the most common what people assume is going to happen at that point is the cottage is going to get sold and the proceeds are going to get distributed, right? Now, distributed exactly to who? You know, if you decide to go that way, then that's your decision. Do your children get it? Do who, does whoever owns a share at that point get it? Uh, how about the people who got bought out, right? Do, are they entitled to anything? because they got bought out based on the assumption this cottage was going to last forever. Are they, are they entitled to anything if the place ultimately gets sold? So there are all these questions about if you sell it, how do those allocations go? I have to say that my favorite solution is the other solution that some folks suggested to me, and they did. They gave it all to charity. They said, look, when, when I die, I'm, I'm making distributions of all of my cash and my other things to my kids, right? But then there's this special thing that I'm giving, which is this wonderful place. I'm not giving a pile of money, I'm not giving an investment, I'm giving this wonderful place 
that may very well increase in value over time. I mean, I bet your cottages have increased in value over time. Well, not if you bought them five years ago, but in general, right, they increased over time. But really, you're giving this sense of life to your family. And if your family is no longer going to enjoy it, maybe that's not a bad time to say, okay, well then the cottage gets sold and the proceeds get distributed to, I don't know, the, the Martha's Vineyard Land Trust, to, to a charity that you think is really important, to some place that may be continuing what you think was really special about this place. Whatever it is, first of all, it's allowing you to, to do something really special a long time after you've done it. Right, to make a really special donation to somebody. The other thing it's doing, though, is it's really increasing from my experience, and, and I've only been doing this now for 36 years. I'm, you know, compared to a lot of you, I'm young, right? That's what I like, as I say, about doing elder law is that people still think of me as a young lawyer, you know? But over that time, you know, I've seen some of these kind of things kind of play out, and what you are doing by saying the proceeds go to charity is you're eliminating some of the tension that we saw in the earlier slides, right? Between the child that is in San Diego and that wants his share, or others that really could just use the cash, right? And therefore, there starts building up in the family this pressure between the ones that really could use the money, right? And the ones that really want to keep the cottage. And I'm sure that you've all seen those situations play out. Right? So by doing this, and it's not like you're doing it regarding you know, every dime that you're going to leave somebody. The cottage is a piece of your assets, but it's, if it's a second home, it's probably not, it's not all of your assets, right? So it's not like you're not giving things to your children. So just as a thought, you, I mean, you want to figure out what that final strategy is going to be. You want to figure out where things get, 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 the, get given when you die, or, or when the cottage gets sold. And this may be a solution. Finally, how are you going to do all of that, right? Because we were just talking about, in last month and this month, we talked about a whole lot of decisions that have to get made regarding how all of this is going to get managed. The question is, what's the best way to do it? Well, if you are simply leaving the cottage to your kids, right, then you are leaving it to them either jointly with rights of survivorship or in some other way. Now, I remember mentioning last week that many of us in, in our law firm, and I'm in a, really a large law firm, there are 67 of us, several of us do a lot of real estate, and everyone has been baffled by exactly what this is, right? Legally, what the cottage is. Um, the consensus view at this point, and I know that, I, I'm sure, I know this gets discussed right among cottage owners too, because you're kind of wondering legally what it is. Uh, the consensus view at this point, at this point, is that this really is uh, uh, real estate. Uh, it's not land, uh, but it is a form of real estate. Real estate. The traditional definition of real estate is, is land and structures that are permanently affixed to land, and fixtures that are permanently affixed to structures. Uh, and the question is, if you've got a cottage that can be moved or that could have to be moved in the event that the lease expires, even though it looks like, I mean, I look around, those certainly look like they're permanently affixed to the land, you know, but is, does that make them um, be not real estate, right? Uh, the, the, the consensus view, and once again, I've asked, and it, it appears that this case has not occurred in, in Massachusetts. We're now looking at this nationally because we know, and, and Craig and Elo have told us there are several other campgrounds in other states. We're looking to see if there are things like this that have occurred in other states. Is that because a leasehold interest, which is what you have in the land, you have a leasehold in the land, the right to be on the land, only for a short time, but you have a leasehold interest in the land, right? Is a, is a right in land that while that lease continues, the, the house that is sitting on that leasehold interest is also real estate, for, or would be for purposes of these kinds of questions, of division of the property, descent and distribution, which means, which, and the reason why I go through that exercise is, the, the real question is, well, what happens if people are fighting, right? What happens if people are fighting? What happens if you leave your cottage to all three kids, and, and you know, they're not, the bills aren't getting paid, and the cottage needs to get sold, but one of them says, I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to sign. I'm just not going to sign. Well, what do you do, right? 
And the answer is that there is a statute that allows for partition of, of real estate, partition of property. Uh, and it would appear to us that that's what you could do in that case, is you could get a petition to partition real estate, right? In the meantime, though, in the meantime, unless you do that, unless all three kids, if you leave your, your property to your three kids, unless all three kids sign on the bill, of, the next bill of sale, you can't sell it. You just can't sell it, which means all three kids have a veto over everything over what the price is. Suppose the two out of the three agree on what the price is, but the third one doesn't. That's a problem. You can't sell it. Right? They all have to be signing on the, on the bill of sale. So there are some issues. And by the way, if you're subject to real estate rules, okay, regarding if that is real estate, and therefore if, if the three people who are the, the, tenant, the tenants, right, who have this interest in the property, hold that tenancy as joint tenants or as tenants in common, those are specific legal real estate terms, that means they all have the right to be there all the time. 